Hello, my name is Joel Cherico, and I make pottery, mostly things like coffee mugs. And today I'm gonna to tell you a story about why I use ash glazes, why I use ashes to make my glazes and make my pottery. Well, people have been using ashes in pottery for thousands of years. And I live in Minnesota in the United States where there's forests and many people heat their homes with wood stoves. So they have a lot of ash left over at the end of the year. and Normally they just put it in the woods or put it in their gardens, but I get ashes from some of my neighbors and I learned how to process them to make beautiful glaze colors. And most of what I learned was from this book called Ash Glazes by Phil Rogers. Phil Rogers is a, an extremely talented potter. He passed away uh, a year or two ago. And this book I just looked in, it was like $250 on Amazon. So it's a collector's item now. I don't think it's in print anymore, but this is my copy. So I couldn't sell it if I wanted to. And it taught me how to use ash as a glaze through very simple means sifting. You know, he's this, this, this book shows him just using garbage pails and buckets and window screens to sift ash and make beautiful pottery beauty through simplicity. He gives tips on testing, how to test ashes. And if you wanted to learn how to do these things, I'm gonna tell you a few ways that you can learn. They're very simple recipes. I mean, this recipe is a type of stone, type of clay, calcium, quartz, and ash. It's very simple to make. This one is ash, calcium, and feldspar. Just three things to make these glazes. So potters have been using ashes in glaze since you know, 2,000 years ago. They were, he starts this book with uh, a kiln that was built into a hill because they start, start a fire at the bottom of a hill and they dig a tunnel and stack pottery inside. And then the fire naturally rises through the hill and out a chimney. Well, they noticed the pottery would have these speckles on it and be smooth and glossy and yellow. That's literally ash from the fire floating like snowflakes and landing on the pottery and oftentimes wood produces lots of ash. So we use wood, wood ash in our glazes. In this book, there's also a potter named Dick Lehman, who I've talked to a couple times, not for a long time, but he fires his pottery on the side, on seashells, and had all these beautiful colors. And there's a photo of him in it here sifting ash onto the side of a pot. I'm not sure if you can see that, but he's just got a sieve and some ashes to give him the colors. And that's part of what inspired, this is a, a rough draft of a Jupiter mug inspired by the planet Jupiter held on its side to get these drips. Well, it reminded me, I'm not, I, I've, been, I've been sending some, some free pottery out to people and I've, I'm not gonna do that with this book. This, is, this one's mine, but there's another book that it reminded me of called Mastery. I reread this, re -read this book every year. For the past five years, I've reread it. It's by Robert Greene. And he says in this book, this is my copy. You see, it's gotten wet. I've dog-eared and written into the bunch, which I recommend if you really wanna learn. Um, the creative process is more like the crooked branching of a tree. The lesson is simple. What constitutes true creativity is openness and adaptability. And when you use ashes, the ashes change over time. So every time I get new ashes, I have to change my glaze recipes. That's what gives the pottery character. So with that in mind, that's why I use ashes in my pottery. Um, these two cups and this mug and this new copy of Mastery, a brand new copy for somebody to go through and dog ear and mark themselves. And as well as my educational brochure pack, this, this we send to every person who signs up for our Patreon page. And it's the first thing we send them. If they get it and then unsubscribe, we actually lose money on it. But it's basically pamphlets and advertisements, which is still good. It tells all about the pottery I make, my catalog of pottery, and my glaze recipes. So if a potter out there wanted to make these types of glazes, you'd have the recipes right here. So I picked one person. I like to send out surprise gifts every once in a while. So Sierra M, uh, I noticed you're a patron and I'm gonna send you these three pieces of pottery. So these two Nuka iron cups and this, I call it a Nuka cobalt mug. Nuka is a Japanese word and I got the recipe 
I, I learned about the recipe in Phil Rogers' book, but there's many Nuka glazes out there. And again, I published mine on my website. If you want to see it on chericopottery.com, just search ash glazes. I don't know why Nuka is associated with this glaze recipe. It originated in Japan. It's a Japanese word, but it's the white cream colored glaze. And you can see there's a lot of just natural imperfections. There's little bubbles, there's little specks of yellow all down the glaze. And then the way these glazes drip, the shimmering and the lines, that all happens naturally in the firing. I just brush iron oxide on the surface and the way it drips is interacting with the ash. Similarly with this glaze, the intricacy and the kind of hairs that form in the glaze, ash is a key reason why that happens. And every time, every firing is a little different, but every time I get a different batch of ash, I have to adjust the recipe so things melt properly. So Sierra, uh, we already have your address. We're gonna mail these to you. I'll have my team put them all in the mail, the book, the educational brochure pack, and these three pots and you'll get a shipping confirmation. So thank you for being a patron, really appreciate it. And if you're not a patron, that's okay. Um, I really appreciate you watching these videos, taking a minute to learn about my arts and hope you, uh, hope you all have a happy and fun holiday season. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye.